That is the sphere behind me. I got a good view out of my Harris room, but all right, here we go. Better lighting. So today's format's gonna be a little different. I'm gonna put some stats on the screen. I'm not gonna, you know, explain them row by row, but they are gonna be on the screen as I talk to you about volume because I just finished the challenge that included 60 hours in seven days. There was more to it than that, but I did play over 60 hours in seven days, meaning each criterion meant 60 hours minimum in seven days. And I often get questions about volume, specifically with this challenge, some questions about volume, why I go for high volume, is an important, things like that. So I'm gonna show you every 60 hour week in my life on the screen as I talk to you about uh, my thoughts on volume. So, first thing to note about these stats as they go up slowly on the screen is that there is a small amount of bias in them, but there's not a huge amount of bias. When I say bias, I mean there have been weeks in my life where I don't plan on playing a huge number of hours, but it happens just because everything's going perfectly. Every decision I make is the right decision. Every turn card I uh, hit is like the perfect turn card. Every river card is like the ideal river card to win the max off my opponent. There are just some really fun games, some really, some really social games, etc. So sometimes I'm not going for huge hours, but they happen just because the money is so big. But most of these weeks, actually, I was just going for huge hours, and you can see how good the results are. A year and a half ago, I went for 100 hours in 10 days, so of course there's going to be a 60 hour week in there. Right after that I went for 250 hours in 25 days. Of course there's going to be like three, three and a half, 60 hour weeks in there. In 2021, before I had the channel, I went for 1000 hours in 100 days, wound up hitting 900 hours and three minutes in those 100 days, so a lot of 60 hour weeks in there, and this most recent challenge. So a lot of these rows, the goal was play at least 60 hours, and you can see that when a high volume goal is what I'm going for, the results uh, are very good. So, another thing about volume I want to say is a lot of people seem to think, like the argument against high volume that I often hear is after like four or five hours in one day, your mental capacity just like decreases so much that it's not worth playing anymore. Usually when people say something like that, it's just a cop-out for being incredibly, incredibly lazy. Even if you think you can't maintain the same, like, mental ability for, like, six, eight, ten hours, I doubt that it drops off so much that you go from, like, a winning player, and after hour number four, you instantly become a, a losing player. Like, your mental ability can't be decreasing that much, that quickly, like right at hour number four or hour number five. So if you're like, maybe you think you're like a very high winning player, you're making a lot of money in your first four hours of the day, and I would say, okay, even if your mental capacity decreases a little bit, your second four hours of the day, like, you don't lose it all back. Maybe you make slightly less. Like, it's still probably worth it to put in more than like four or five hours a day for most people. But uh, personally, I can't speak for everyone else. It's usually people just like wanting to be lazy, but everyone is different. Uh, I know from all the school I went to, I had very long days studying some difficult uh, like concepts in school. I had some really long days in IT. An eight hour day, a 10 hour day of poker isn't something that's like so outlandish to me that like I'm worried my mental capacity is like gonna get drained. Uh, boring games, I don't like sitting in boring games. That like takes the fun out of it for me and I get really bored and I either want to stop or, or change tables or change casinos. But just the act of like thinking about poker and thinking about like, you know, making sure I'm, I'm observing what I need to observe at the table. Like I've never felt like my mind can't handle it after only like four or five hours, so. Uh, that's the most common argument against volume that I hear, and uh, yeah, here we go. It was 50 weeks. This is uh, the 48th week. These three columns, I had a little space issue on the screen, so here are the 48 weeks, the first 48, and there were two more 60-hour weeks. Here is the 49th, and all these hours went from minimum, you know, they went in ascending order based on hours. So that was the 49th week. 
and here is the 50th week in my life of 60 plus hours. So I just looked up one uh, one of the most tired sessions I ever played in July 2018 in MGM National Harbor. I needed 18 hours on July 31st to hit 300 hours for the month. That was my goal as soon as the month started. And I actually started a 1020 Omaha 8 game up on the stage, which is hilarious. But in addition to that, I played 13 hours, 48 minutes of No Limit Hold'em. I was literally falling asleep between hands at the end. Uh, I knew exactly the minute I could get up and go back to my room and go to sleep, but I was playing until I hit 18 hours, and like I would fold, and then like sleep for the rest of the hand at the table. And I made $64 in 13 hours 48 minutes so without any context i don't have any hand histories maybe i played some hands amazingly maybe i, I butchered a couple of hands but no context i mean i made money in a 14 hour session while i was like falling asleep for the final four four hours of it so i never feel like my mental capacity decreases so much to the point where i'm not a winning player anyway um, I put up each row individually of those 60 hour weeks and thought I would end by just telling you uh, some overall stats from those 50 60 hour weeks I have in my life. 47 of those 50 weeks are winning weeks, 94% clip, pretty good clip. Uh, total money and total hours and total hourly, complete hourly at the bottom. It was like $51,000 in uh, 3,300 hours or something for 15 and change per hour. Don't have it memorized, but the numbers on the screen are exact. Also, I'll put up, let's go this way. I'll put up my best five weeks right here. Pretty good, best five weeks. But I think what's uh, might even be more impressive, my worst five weeks, because there were only three losing weeks in those 50. So my worst five weeks include two weeks that are positive. That's pretty awesome. To wrap up, how many times did I have a week of a thousand something between $1,000 and $1,999? That happened 19 times of the 50. How many times did I have a $2,000 week between $2,000 and $2,999 in profit? That happened six times of the 50 weeks. So there you go. I'm a fan of volume and uh, the data supports that. And remember, Rice is a spoon food. <laughs>